Hi, so what is a mood board? A mood board is a sort of summary of materials, textures, colors, visual references. It's like a collage of everything that will eventually go into your project and that you're putting together to get a pre-approval uh, from your client. So, um, how does one go about uh, deriving it? A, I think one should keep a reasonably good material library within a design studio because a design studio without uh, adequate materials is, is like you know, it's like a kitchen without um, really any materials for cooking. So please do not go and search for materials when you're in the midst of a project. When you visit trade fairs, when you visit showrooms, when you know you are made presentations by different suppliers, please ask for a set of samples and make sure that you keep them in a systematic library for your reference because without those tools on your desk you're not going to be able to even trigger your own imagination. Now while we are in the post-COVID stage what should get into the mood board because you know you can't be dwelling in the mood pre-COVID and delivering a site post-COVID so I would say that um, in terms of materials you will be balancing ecology, budget, and facilitation of work. So ecology is something that's come now as a strong reminder with this economic and um, health crisis. So A, try and get as local as you can. You know, globalization has failed in each and every way. It has taken people so far away from their homes themselves and left them stranded literally. I mean, you can see even the physical repercussions of that happening all over the world now. So for the time being, we are done with it. Let's now look at things in a more localized way. A, the boredom of uh, repetition and, and similarity of looks is gone. So I always look at the brighter side and say that, okay, I mean, I was up to here at looking at stereotypical interiors with five elements jostled and re-jostled against each other to claim uh, uh, new uh, levels of design. But um, the moment you start using local, uh, a, each country, each area will begin to kind of have its own identity once again, and that will bring in a sense of uh, uniqueness. Uh, B, you can't be burning uh, carbon miles and footprints and in, in getting even things like marble and stone and, you know, things from far off places. That, that claim to exclusivity or that claim of luxury is a bit of an embarrassment now. It's like saying that you never heard of a keto diet, or, or you never went to the gym, or you never did anything that was uh, relevant to your times. So uh, looking at foreign things and importing all these uh, sort of glamorous brands from all over the world and putting it together is now going to look a bit like paneer makhani and naan and a bit um, nouveau riche. So, forget it. Let's not pollute the environment. One of the advantages of this crisis has been that we've seen beautiful skies and sunsets and, you know, so much nature and uh, flora, fauna, animals all thriving around us. So, let's not give it up for triviality. So, one of the important elements that will have to come into your mood board is local materials by way of, say, stone that surrounds you. For example, in India, you have such an amazing variety of stones that um, putting them instead of marble is 
not only uh, getting things from closer and getting things that are climatically suited to you, that the local labor knows how to fit easily, but they also go with the light and color that you see outside of the window. So, uh, what are the other uh, sort of materials with which you can balance out? This is going to be not a, um, one theory period of adjustment, because if it was so simple, it wouldn't have come in such a complex way that it's hit us. So no one solution is going to work with this. So your solutions also will have to be made multi-pronged. So now, for example, if you say that, you know, I've used stone and I have to use all natural materials, so I'm going to use solid wood and I'm going to use this. And I, well, you're not doing things now either with a vengeance or going to an extreme or you're not doing anything to complete a thesis. You, you have to take an essential point of view and that is what I mean by essentialism is to say that not need, not greed, not theory, not intellectual uh, claims. You, you bring in what you think is the most essential to that project and keep it simple. So yes, you shouldn't be overdoing the wood part because you're still going to then work against uh, the carbon footprint. And it's fine to use um, veneers. It's okay to use laminates because uh, in this battle for uh, natural versus synthetic, one will constantly have to take a judicious viewpoint. So if a plywood or an MDF base with a laminate is going to be made quicker, cheaper, more efficiently done, and also, in a way, come with a sense of impermanence, because you didn't have to go through a lot to achieve that, then it's already earned a lot of brownie points on those grounds. So yes, it is not as good as solid wood, but it has many other compensating factors. Similarly, um, go through each element and say that, do you need uh, to put in curtains and of two kinds, heavy curtains, sheer curtains and blinds and everything as window treatments in your mood board? Or do you want to find one treatment that doesn't hold so much dust and, you know, doesn't require that much maintenance and cleaning and serves the purpose of light control. You have a lot of interesting blinds these days that seem to do that. And while all this seems taking away, I think there are easy factors to again enrich the mood board. So even starting with the floor, that you don't need to do a, a plain floor, you can do a pattern floor. You don't need to do a plain ceiling, you can do a pattern ceiling. You don't need to stick to your white ivory beige and light gray uh, sort of neutral colors. Play with color, especially in India. It's easy to play with colors and, and strong color codes will themselves uh, contribute not just to a vibrant uh, mood board, uh, but also to uh, an impactful uh, mood enhancing interior. So mood board, the word mood has to be even more seriously looked at post-COVID post because now you are responsible not just for conveying the mood of the project, but also for uplifting the mood of the user and the viewer because people are going to be so sort of um, depressed and mentally set back after this whole period that um, just a fresh burst of color and just a fresh perspective within a space, that sense of delight that it produces will be registered and it will be remembered. So try to get a completely new graphic, new feeling to your spaces. 
don't just go back to what you were used to doing. Take a break and reanalyze uh, how you want to approach this whole thing.